Today's Mass Readings and Gospel Reflection June 7, 2023 Wednesday The Ninth Week in Ordinary Time We bless your name, O Lord, for sending your own incarnate Son to become part of a family, so that, as he lived its life, he would experience its worries and its joys. We ask you, Lord, to protect and watch over this family, so that in the strength of your grace its members may enjoy prosperity, possess the priceless gift of your peace, and, as the church alive in the home, bear witness in this world to your glory. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. First reading. A reading from the book of Tobit. Tobit chapter 3 verse 1 to 11 a and 16 to 17 a. Grief stricken in spirit, I, Tobit, groaned and wept aloud. Then with sobs I began to pray. You are righteous, O Lord and all your deeds are just. All your ways are mercy and truth. You are the judge of the world. And now, O Lord, may you be mindful of me, and look with favor upon me. Punish me not for my sins, nor for my inadvertent offenses, nor for those of my ancestors. We sinned against you, and disobeyed your commandments. So you handed us over to plundering, exile, and death till you made us the talk and reproach of all the nations among whom you had dispersed us. Yes, your judgments are many and true in dealing with me as my sins and those of my ancestors deserve. For we have not kept your commandments, nor have we trodden the paths of truth before you. So now, deal with me as you please, and command my life breath to be taken from me, that I may go from the face of the earth into dust. It is better for me to die than to live, because I have heard insulting calumnies, and I am overwhelmed with grief. Lord, command me to be delivered from such anguish. Let me go to the everlasting abode. Lord, refuse me not, for it is better for me to die than to endure so much misery in life, and to hear these insults. On the same day, at Ecbatana in Media, it so happened that Regal's daughter Sarah also had to listen to abuse, from one of her father's maids, for she had been married to seven husbands. But the wicked demon Osmodius killed them off before they could have intercourse with her, as it is prescribed for wives. So the maid said to her, You are the one who strangles your husbands. Look at you. You have already been married seven times, but you have had no joy with any one of your husbands. Why do you beat us? Is it on account of your seven husbands? Because they are dead? May we never see a son or daughter of yours. The girl was deeply saddened that day, and she went into an upper chamber of her house, where she planned to hang herself. But she reconsidered, saying to herself, No. People would level this insult against my father. You had only one beloved daughter. But she hanged herself because of ill fortune and thus would I cause my father in his old age to go down to the netherworld laden with sorrow. It is far better for me not to hang myself, but to beg the Lord to have me die, so that I need no longer live to hear such insults. At that time, then, she spread out her hands, and facing the window, poured out her prayer, Blessed are you, O Lord, merciful God, and blessed is your holy and honorable name. Blessed are you in all your works forever. At that very time, the prayer of these two suppliants was heard in the glorious presence of Almighty God. So Raphael was sent to heal them both, to remove the cataracts from Tobit's eyes, so that he might again see God's sunlight, and to marry Regal's daughter Sarah to Tobit's son Tobiah, and then drive the wicked demon Osmodius from her. The Word of the Lord Responsorial Psalm Psalms chapter 25 verse 2 to 3, 4 to 5 AB, 6, 7 BC and 8 to 9. Let our response be, To you, O Lord, I lift my soul. 
In you I trust. Let me not be put to shame. Let not my enemies exult over me. No one who waits for you shall be put to shame. Those shall be put to shame who heedlessly break faith. Response. To you, O Lord, I lift my soul. Your ways, O Lord, make known to me. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth and teach me. For you are God my Savior. Response. To you, O Lord, I lift my soul. Remember that your compassion, O Lord, and your kindness are from of old. In your kindness remember me. Because of your goodness, O Lord. Response. To you, O Lord, I lift my soul. Good and upright is the Lord. Thus he shows sinners the way. He guides the humble to justice. He teaches the humble his way. Response. To you, O Lord, I lift my soul. Alleluia. John chapter 11 verse 25 a and 26. Alleluia, Alleluia. I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. Whoever believes in me will never die. Alleluia, Alleluia. Gospel reading. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Mark chapter 12 verse 18 to 27. Some Sadducees, who say there is no resurrection, came to Jesus and put this question to him, saying, Teacher, Moses wrote for us, If someone's brother dies, leaving a wife but no child, his brother must take the wife and raise up descendants for his brother. Now there were seven brothers. The first married a woman and died, leaving no descendants. So the second brother married her and died, leaving no descendants and the third likewise, and the seven left no descendants. Last of all the woman also died. At the resurrection when they arise whose wife will she be? For all seven had been married to her. Jesus said to them, Are you not misled because you do not know the scriptures or the power of God? When they rise from the dead, they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but they are like the angels in heaven. As for the dead being raised, have you not read in the book of Moses, in the passage about the bush, how God told him, I am the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. He is not God of the dead but of the living. You are greatly misled. The Gospel of the Lord Before we proceed with the video, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to our channel. Also please hit the notification bell, so you won't miss out when we release new videos. Feel free to share your comments, suggestions, and reflections at the comments section down below. Thank you and God bless. Now, let's proceed with the video. The Reflection on Today's Gospel In today's Gospel the confrontation between Jesus and the authorities continues. After the priests, the elders and the scribes and the Pharisees and the Herodians, now the Sadducees appear who ask a question about resurrection. It is a controversial theme, which caused argument and discussion among the Sadducees and the Pharisees. In the Christian communities of the year 70, the time when Mark wrote his Gospel, there were some Christians who, in order to not be persecuted, tried to reconcile the teaching of Jesus with the ideas of the Roman Emperor. The others who resisted the empire were persecuted, accused and questioned by the authority due to neighbors who felt annoyed, bothered by their witness. The description of the conflicts of Jesus with the authority was a very great help for the Christians so as not to allow themselves to be manipulated by the ideology of the empire. In reading these episodes of conflict of Jesus with the authorities, the persecuted Christians were encouraged to continue on this road. The Sadducees were the aristocratic elite of landowners and traders. They were willing to borrow from Hellenism and believed in written, but not oral, law. They did not accept faith in the resurrection. At that time, 
This faith was beginning to be challenged by the Pharisees and popular piety. It urged the resistance of the people against the dominion of the Romans, and of the priests, of the elders and of the Sadducees themselves. For the Sadducees, the Messianic kingdom was already present in the situation of well-being in which they were living. They may have followed what we call today as the theology of retribution, which distorted reality. According to this theology, God rewards with richness and well-being those who observe the law of God, and He punishes with suffering and poverty those who do evil. A variation of this today in some independent Christian communities is called prosperity theology. It is also related to the concept of Deuteronomist theology, which refers to the agenda of the Deuteronomic authors. This explains why the Sadducees did not want change. They wanted religion to remain as it was, immutable like God Himself in the written law. This is why they did not accept faith in the resurrection and in the help of angels, who sustained the struggle of those who saw changes in liberation. The question of the Sadducees. They go to Jesus to criticize and to ridicule faith in the resurrection, to tell about the fictitious case of the woman who got married seven times and at the end she died without having any children. The so-called law of the Labyrinth obliged the widow who had no children to marry the brother of the deceased husband. The son who would have been born from this new marriage would be considered the son of the deceased husband. Thus, he would have a descendant. But in the case proposed by the Sadducees, the woman, in spite of having had seven husbands, remained without a son. They asked Jesus, in the resurrection, when they will rise, to whom will the woman belong? because seven had her as wife. This was in order to say that to believe in the resurrection was absurd. The Jesus responds harshly. Surely, the reason why you are wrong is that you understand neither the scriptures nor the power of God. Jesus explains that the condition of persons after death will be totally different from the present condition. After death there will be no marriage. But all will be as the angels in heaven. The Sadducees imagined life in heaven as life on earth. And at the end Jesus concludes, He is not the God of the dead, but of the living. You are in great error. The disciples are warned. Those who are on the side of these Sadducees will be on the side opposite to God. What is the church's teaching of heaven? And what is my own view? Do I also believe in the resurrection? What does the following mean for me? I believe in the resurrection of the body and in life everlasting. Have you heard or met anyone who believes in the theology of retribution or prosperity theology? Lord, I lift up my eyes to you who are enthroned in heaven. Just as the eyes of slaves are on their master's hand, or the eyes of a slave girl on the hand of her mistress, so our eyes are on Yahweh our God, for him to take pity on us.